Tesla Model S and X long anticipated refresh is finally here more than eight years after its original launch and it couldn't have come at the worst time for me. You see, I just was about to upload the video called the Tesla Model S refresh, what to expect, thinking they're not gonna unveil the refresh right at the same day when they're busy with their Q4 earnings call. Well, they definitely beat my expectations for once. But don't worry, I will show you all of the pictures, interior and exterior, all of the specs. However, there are some things that they have not released yet, so actually we can't talk about some of our expectations. Elon Musk has just called the refreshed Model S the best car of any kind during that earnings call I was talking about, but unlike eight years ago, there is now competition and the expectations are high. I've asked my online Model S owner community a day before the refresh about their expectations, so did the refresh meet them? And of course, you are welcome, as always, to play alone in the comment section, and we're gonna do it right now. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of everything that's going on in the world of electric cars. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Now, we don't know everything about the refresh just yet. Elon Musk mentioned that there will be another press conference about it. Now, I also have to mention that this is technically not the first refresh. There was one back in 2016 when Tesla has changed the way the front fascia looked. And I wasn't very crazy about it back then because I just bought my 2015 Model S and it was less than a year old, but... That's old news and many, many therapy sessions later. If you remember, a couple of years ago, Electric has leaked a couple of pictures of the interior design that Tesla was working on at that time. And I gotta say, that was pretty close to what we are seeing today. And I'll show that to you in a second. And of course, Elon mentioned many times that we should not expect the refresh of the car that they're really making for the sentimental reasons. And I called the BS back then. Of course, I'm calling the BS right now. It is a flagship car for the entire lineup with the best range and power specs that have been also upgraded with this refresh. So let's talk about it, what's in, what's out, and what's still unknown. Before that, of course, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Climate Exchange. The Tesla raffle is only a few weeks away. You can win a Tesla of your choice. 4,000 tickets were offered, but only a few hundred left at this point. So make sure to get yours using the link in the description of this video. And even if you don't win, the money will go towards a great environmental cause. And by NeoCharge, kill two birds with one smart splitter from NeoCharge, featuring intelligent sensing technology. You can charge two cars at the same time without spending a ton of money on rewiring your home. Get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video. All right, before we get to the cosmetic interior and exterior changes, let's talk about the specs and of course the price, because the price... The price went up by about $10,000. Now, it's pretty much the same as the upcoming entry-level Taycan, though it doesn't have the federal tax credit that Taycan has, which bring its price to $72,500. Now, Taycan has outsold the Model S in Q4 of last year, 9,000 units to about 6,000 units. And I did make a video about that if you're interested in a full story. That video is in the library of my channel. But let's move on to the specs. Now, there will be no standard range model or performance models. They will be replaced by the long range, plaid, and plaid plus. Now, the long range will go 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds and have a range of 412 miles. That's dual motor. The plaid will do 0 to 60 in about 2 seconds. It will have a range of 390 miles and it will start at $120,000. Plaid Plus, 0 to 60, less than 2 seconds, whatever that means. 520 plus miles of range, and that one will start at 140,000. All right, so let's talk about the exterior. Now, exterior, as you probably noticed, didn't really change much for the Model S or the Model X. And I think it's a good thing because I absolutely love how both of them looked. I know it's been a while, but the look is still pretty modern. Now, if they did change the design, I would have probably preferred it to be modeled after the beautiful second generation Roadster. This is probably what it would have looked like, thanks to our friends at Electric Design for the renderings you're looking at, but 
it has not changed and I think again it's a good thing let me know in the comment section if you agree it looks like the door handles are not going to change because I think it's one of the coolest features of the model as as long as they work of course many of us model s owners have had problems with that so Hopefully they figured that out. I was really, really, really hoping they weren't going to go with the Model 3 and Y door handles. I think those are super cheap. I, I just really don't like it. So I'm glad this stayed. Now, I don't know if this feature is going to be included in the refresh, but I really hope that the doors, at least front doors, will be self-opening and closing just like they are in the Model X, but also the EQS and the lucid air will have that feature as well now this particular feature i don't think they have added i'm talking about adding the ccs charging port now they have that in europe already and they have the dual port in china and i think it would be absolutely amazing if they do it also here in the united states now the reason for that and this is something that most tesla owners are not aware of there are about 1000 supercharger locations here in the united states but over 1600 ccs fast charging locations between the electrify america and evgo fast charging networks that Tesla is also compatible with. Now the Tesla owners can use those locations, but you need an adapter and that also limits the maximum charging speed. But if that technology would have been built in, the Tesla owners would have access to over 2,600 locations for fast charging instead of 1,000. One of the features that doesn't seem like it was added that I was rooting for because it is even on my Chevy Volt and pretty much on every single new car in America, I'm talking about the blind spot indicators. I don't know why Tesla is being so stubborn. It's not very expensive to add. Just like I said, every car pretty much has it now. It's useful and there is really no reason for Tesla not to do it. The last but not least exterior feature that I really hope the refresh has, we don't know yet, but I'm talking about the motorized frunk. As you can see, the Hummer EV and the upcoming Rivian trucks will have that feature. So will a few other electric cars that are coming on the market this and next year. So I really hope this feature is already in. If not, you guys will just have to continue buying the aftermarket kits, which you can install to make it work. Now let's get to the meat of this video, which is the interior updates. That's where most of them actually took place and most people wanted them to take place. Now, of course, we got to start with the wheel. It is very cool. It is probably the biggest, coolest change that you see for the interior. But I got to tell you, I know what it's like driving a car with this type of the wheel. I've done it with a few prototypes, including the EQS, and it is not very comfortable. Plus, I'm not really sure if the regulations, especially here in the US, would allow that because if they did, I feel like there would be already a few cars on the market with this type of the wheel. So we'll have to wait and see. Now let's talk about the screen because that's where the biggest change is. I was really hoping they were going to keep it vertical, but they didn't. They went into the Model 3, Model Y route. It is horizontal. I always felt that it's easier to operate and reach for the driver if the screen is vertical, but they made a decision and I have to say I'm, I'm, I'm not very happy with it. Let me know in the comment section if you are. And if I was ever to be comfortable with a horizontal screen like this, uh, it would have to be curved and turned towards the driver. And this is not really the case. I will give them one thing. The screen is now kind of built into the dashboard rather than looking like an iPad was just glued on top of it. Now, I do have to say, to their credit, they did keep the instrumental panel. I think if they would have gotten rid of it, just like in the Model 3 and Model Y, that would have been the biggest mistake of the refresh. So they did keep it, and that's awesome. However, I don't think they've added the most anticipated feature, which would be the HUD, the head-up display. Many other cars have had it for years. It is really awesome if you have ever experienced one. You essentially don't want to drive a car without it once you get used to it. Many manufacturers are now implementing the augmented reality in their HUD. So I think Tesla should really think about doing this in the near future. Speaking of the screens, Tesla did add one extra screen. Unfortunately, it was a shared screen for the back passengers instead of what I would have preferred, which is two headrest screens. I would have also preferred if Tesla added, and I know it's a bit of a stretch, but a separate screen for the front passenger. This is something that Porsche Taycan has, the upcoming EQS will have, and I really think 
that this does add the experience for someone who's a lot of times right next to you, no matter how much you want that divorce. There are a few other things that I would have preferred that they've added, and I don't know if they did. I know they've added ventilated seats. Not sure if those have the massager built in. A game controller would be nice. I don't know if they might have the gesture control equipment for the future software updates. That would be nice. But one thing that a lot of people in my Facebook group complained and said they would really, really like to be redone, and that's the cup holders. That's right. After eight years, apparently Tesla could make everybody happy with their cup holders. Hopefully this new interior design solves that problem. And now let's talk about the biggest thing that I think Tesla Model S owners complained from the very beginning, and that's the lack of luxury. Now you're looking at the new design right now, and I don't know if this was enough. Is it too simple still? Of course, it depends on what kind of build quality it's going to have, what kind of materials they're going to use. I know BMW, Audi, Mercedes, they've all started making a much more simpler interior, but still keeping it luxury. I don't know if Tesla achieved it. Once again, let me know in the comment section if you think they did. So that's all we know for now. And of course, there will be more information coming out in the next few weeks. I will keep you guys updated on that. But now it's your turn to let me know right there in the comment section what do you think did they improve this car with a refresh is it kind of the same or could it be that they made it worse let me know as i mentioned earlier in the video the tesla model s refresh is coming in the year where the competition to tesla is heating up and if you're wondering what to watch next check out what sandy munro himself thinks of the competition that Tesla will have later this year. I linked to that video in the description of this video. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.